Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise Him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that were following, shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We praise and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed Son of David and King of Kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. We ask that you bless these branches and those who bear them, and grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King, and follow him with perfect confidence, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing together our processional hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you as the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. We invite all children, young and old, to come forward for the children's sermon. It's meeting here on the steps. Come on up over here. We might need to have more room. So come on up over here where you're comfortable and where you can see my ball. That's okay. Get comfortable. There you go. Come on up. You can see. So, my dear friends and spiritual brain trust, um, I wanted to share with you part of a story. Is that all right with you? And I'm telling you right now that it's just part of the story. We're going to go back through the beginning. We're going to take our time in the middle. And then, I'm not going to tell you the end yet, but I'm going to give you guys a sneak preview of what the ending is going to be. And I need you to promise you can keep a secret until next week when we tell everybody the secret ending. Is that okay? Will you make that promise? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, all right. So this is a story about Jesus, all right? I'll tell you what. I'm going to scooch over this way so you all can see all the pictures. Okay. So this is a story about Jesus, who didn't look unusual at all. He looked like anyone else, but was like nobody who had ever lived before. This was God's own son. When he spoke, his words made things happen. His words make things come A-L-I-V-E, alive. Jesus gathered people like fishermen to be his followers, and he did amazing things like healing people who were sick, and just with a touch, just with a word, he made them well again. Jesus even helped somebody, his friends lowered him down from the roof and helped him to walk again, and he was well. Jesus went out with his friends on a boat one time, and a storm came up, and Jesus spoke to the storm. Hey, wind, hey, water, be still, and they were still. And Jesus went with his friends, and one time even, fed a big crowd of thousands of people with just five little loaves of bread and two little fish. And then Jesus came walking on the water to his disciples. How do we do that? Jesus was walking on the water and told them not to be afraid. Now here's the part we're going to take slow so you know what happens in the story. After their journey, the man, this is Jesus, called his disciples together for a meal. He blessed the bread and the wine and said, It's time for me to leave you. I'll be broken like this bread and poured out like this drink. One of you will betray me, and all the flock will be scattered. The disciples were astonished. They cried in denial. As the shouting grew, the doubting disciple, called Judas, fled from the table. There he is running away into the night. After dinner, as the disciples and Jesus rested in a, the inky darkness of the garden, everything changed. For a bag of silver coins, Judas had turned into a betrayer. He led the rich taunters and their soldiers and, to arrest Jesus. These powerful people with their fancy clothes were tired of listening to everybody talk about the miracle man Jesus. They feared the crowd would no longer listen to them. The taunters had decided it was time for the miracle. Some disciples ran away. Some fought, but the miracle man Jesus raised his hand and said, No more! To Judas he said, This is your hour when darkness reigns. The soldiers led the miracle man away into the shadow. The miracle man Jesus was sent to die. The disciples, who just wanted <coughs> fishermen again, were heartbroken. There's Jesus having to carry that thing every problem. It seemed the miracles had come to an end. Now, I told you we're not going to get to the whole end of the story yet, but I'm going to give you all a sneak preview of what happens. Will you promise we can keep it secret for one week? The grown-ups aren't ready to hear it yet. It's um, just too amazing. We're going to need to keep it secret. I'm going to turn off my microphone so just we'll hear it, okay? We're going to keep it secret, and then we'll tell them next week. They'll get to learn what happens at the end, okay? All right. So, as I was saying, <laughs> the rest of the 
congregation. Today we just need to hear and be okay with the sad part of the news that Jesus was willing to go to a cross for us. But even that by itself is amazing good news, that there's nothing Jesus wasn't willing to do for the love of you. That Jesus loves you so much, and 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 all these grown-ups as well. He was willing to give up his whole life even to go to a cross for us. That's amazing. But you all know, God's got more good news even than that, right? We're going to keep it secret. We'll tell them next Sunday, okay? All right, cool. All right, so would you all right where you are pray with me? And would you all right where you are pray with me? Dear Jesus, we come to you right where we are in the middle of our story. And we are grateful that you go with us, not just on the happy days and waving palm branches and singing hosannas, but that you're with us even on the sad days. You're with us in the difficult times. You're with us even being willing to give up your life for us on the cross. And we are thankful that you promised us that's not the end of the story either. There is more story to be told. So gather us again, again together next week to tell the rest of that story. And for now, let it be enough for us to know you loved us enough that you were willing to give your whole life for us even on the cross. We love you too, Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up. You can go back to your places. He humbled himself 
and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every name should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass until I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. <clears throat> Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on the sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled.
Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. <clears throat> then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? And they answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. What, who was it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. <clears throat> A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him and said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave them no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. 
Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah. For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of the dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. 
And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his life. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance, since they had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go. <laughs> Make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The gospel of the We sing our hymn of the day for the sacred head now.
we believe in the words of the Nicene Creed that can be found on the inside cover of your hymns. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose. 